Are you looking for a podcast that talks about life, the universe, and everything? Listen in to the Illumination Hour, Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Listen live at Spreaker.com or NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. We're also on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, and iTunes. The Illumination Hour, brought to you by Nonpartisan Liberty for All Media and Radio Network. And your host, Ellen Stallone. Because a spark can illuminate the world. Alpha Team Report. Get a grip on this operation, Heather. That's bored. Great life, yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. We will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get the tickets. We force them. And at the end of the day, each and every member is going to go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. We are back live. It is the first day back of 2017, January 3rd, uh, Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. And we are back live. Uh, we've been away for a couple weeks, so it's good to uh, be back. And We've been, you know, on the air with old shows. And, of course, uh, for people that don't know, we're on 24 hours a day now. We have a 24-hour stream, but uh, we haven't done a live show in a couple weeks uh, over the holidays. So, again, it's good to be back, and it's good to be doing the first show of 2017 here live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We are on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday at now 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All media and radio network, which, as I mentioned, now runs 24-7. And you can listen live on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com to the live stream and to the archives immediately following the show uh, on most of these applications, they're available uh, immediately following the show or five to ten minutes after uh, Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom, exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence and we of course are always happy to hear from you and you can call us at 702-470-7664 that's 702-470-7664 or you can reach us via skype username nonpartisan liberty for all that's again uh, nonpartisan liberty for all via Skype. Just send a contact request and your name and what you want to talk about, and we will get you on the air live. We uh, also, of course, have a website where. If you forget any of the call-in information or Skype information or um, 
want to contact us along with lots of other stuff, original articles um, and blogs and things along those lines, you can check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. So be sure to check us out there. Also links to all our social media Facebook, Twitter, all of that. You can find all that information at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. So we have an interesting week. Uh, I've been planning at least the Wednesday and Thursday show for a while now, and I didn't feel like I was ready to do those shows. I still don't feel like I'm ready, but it's been a, a, a while and I've gotten a lot of information and I think, you know, we can't do- continue to delay those shows and that's the Sandy Hook shows. And I'm going to do a two part, uh, I wouldn't say series, but a two part show on that Wednesday and Thursday on Sandy Hook and all the, I guess, allegations, um, whether, you know, you have people that say it was a false flag or it didn't happen in the first place or all of these different things and all the information that was brought up by various people I uh, watched a lot of documentaries on it. You know, some of the information, of course, there was a bias to it. And some of it, there was just, it made you think. So, I, I'm not 100% sure, obviously, what happened. Well, obviously, I, I don't know what happen for sure but I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it Um, I lean in one direction based on the information and again this is going over a lot of information so and comparing it to other things that happen so tonight to kind of get ready for that and have some baseline as well We're going to talk about false flags and what those are, as well as exploitation and fear, as well as exploiting fear is really what they do. But they do it in in, in they being, you know, the government and the people, the powers that be that, you know, they exploit events and they also exploit fear uh, from those events. So it's... It can be the same thing, but it's also two different things, meaning that they can exploit an event to get a bill passed or they can exploit an event to get a bill passed and also scare people. And that's how they get their bill passed. It depends on what the event was, but usually they go hand in hand because the things that are exploited the most that get I think the most amount of support are things that they use the scare tactics and people are injured in some kind of way or there's the potential for harm or whether it's drugs or guns or whatever it might be and Sandy Hook uh, was probably at least from the events that you know I've looked at one of the most exploited. Now, nine eleven, of course, was exploited as well, but nine eleven was totally different in that people. They really didn't have to, the government really didn't have to exploit it initially. Um, People right away supported the government. Unlike Sandy Hook where some people did and there were too many people that have been through the bullshit already and seen 
things like 9-11 and how the government can stage things or they can it it doesn't even necessarily have to be uh staged or and stage isn't the right word where they can be involved in in things or create false flags or even not create false flags but lie about the real story and have all these things that don't make sense and then where they definitely exploit events and and I've always said that people can argue the how things happened or who was involved or whether government has been involved in certain uh events because some of them they've admitted it it's come out in declassified documents and things like that but they can argue that but one of the things that you really can't argue is that the government exploits events and tragedies and all of these things they're they're going to exploit it as much as possible to get done what they need to get done politically and to push their agenda and it's funny because not that kind of funny but there are so many people that do not trust politicians and i've brought up before like why do they even ask people uh oh do you trust this politician i mean you still have idiots i guess that would trust a politician but why would you you take away the fact that they're a politician why would you trust somebody on tv that you don't know that's like asking do you trust an actor um or do you trust somebody in a fucking commercial i mean asking somebody if they trust a politician is in, in insane they don't know them they just know their persona it's like people that don't know me and just hear me on the radio um although i think that's a, a more legitimate question to be honest if people trust me that don't know me than a politician because at least i come out here and talk a lot more about you know if you listen to every show you get to know me more i guess and and hear what i say and what i'm trying to do and you know how i'm doing this for free uh, obviously and i'm doing it because of what i see happening and all of these things so but it would it's the same concept in a way but it's uh i'd expect more people to i'm not saying me specifically but to trust you know an independent radio host a lot more than fucking um politicians i mean they're in the business of lying i mean that's part of their job description almost if you wrote a job description for a politician uh lying and deceiving people is uh in my opinion you know part of their job description so you already have that to an extent i think the majority of people especially uh in the past you know, five years or so, especially, or even, you know, the past decade, I think it's been moving more towards people not trusting politicians. Now, people still want different things. And unfortunately, those people still want government, no matter what politicians or what government does, they still support the government and support the system. A lot of them, which is insane to me. But Looking at politicians, when you already have an idea that, okay, they exploit things, they're out for their own interests, they're out for their own success, benefit, whatever words or however you want to describe it, 
what would be so far fetched about them creating an event that's going to benefit them or being involved in one. So, of course, if you're somebody like the president or a congressman, you want to limit your involvement. And, and I think when it comes to Congress people or congressmen, I think they, they they limit their involvement or limit their exposure in a lot of things. Uh, I think it's more uh, the, the senior con- congressmen as well that are going to be the ones that are apt to do this, but that they may have some involvement, but set it up as, well, I need deniability and, and, They may be the ones, though, to kind of set things in motion in a way that they have deniability and, you know, it's more of a they all they get away with whatever. Anyway, the government can pretty much get away with whatever they want. But, you know, they have the CIA do whatever or they don't want to know the specifics but they give uh, not an idea, but a at more at a high level, we you know need something like this to happen, or you know something like that, and whether it's at the level of the president or Congress or just the CIA acting on their own or, you know, the various secretaries that are uh, in the executive branch uh, having it go through them. And I would think if, you know, the president is ever involved in anything that he's definitely, it's definitely going to go through somebody high up like a, you know, secretary of state to take care of it and the president have the deniability. So, and then they may pass it, you know, down and it get, may continue to get passed down. Um, But my point being is that if you see them exploit these things and you look at Sandy Hook and Obama exploited the fuck out of that. I mean, I, I never seen in my lifetime that I can remember. And and that also has to do with the fact that there were different times in my life where I paid more attention to what was going on than when I didn't. And there's times where I got fed up and I would always yell at the TV and shit like that. And I just totally stopped watching, um, you know, government media. And now I pretty much do that as well. I only watch any government media to study it as far as the bullshit that they're putting out there. So I want to see how they're covering something and how they create the narrative or whether I'm watching it, you know, live, which I did with a couple things like the Boston bombing and things like that. Or I go back through documentaries that people put together with, uh, all of the footage of their coverage and either way that's the only reason or purpose for me looking at any government media period there's no point because you cannot believe anything they say and Think about how does the new system work? Now, even if the the government media wasn't controlled by the government, and you can say they're not and deny, deny it and whatever, but there's enough information. To me, there's enough information to come to a logical conclusion that 
the government controls the media. Okay, first of all, you only have about six corporations that own 95% of the media or something like that. I remember, I always bring this up, I remember when I was in college, and at that time it was like 10 corporations, and there was a book on it, and and they essentially tried to hide that fact because what is, (laughs) you think about it, it's like a politician passing a law that's bad for politicians, like decreasing decreasing their pay or something. Why would the media, government media, speak out about the fact that they're all only owned by a small amount of companies? They they wouldn't. And I remember watching this thing that said it was mentioned once on Saturday Night Live, did a skit that never aired again, and then somebody else talked about it, and that was it. And now it's talked about a lot. They mention it. But nobody seems to care anyway. So and I don't know that it's really mentioned too much on government media, though. I hear it mentioned, but it's probably coming from independent media where I'm hearing it mentioned. They don't focus on that. And I'm trying to think about it if I've ever heard that mentioned. And I don't believe I have um, on any of the government media networks but even if they weren't set up that way and let's just say for a minute that they weren't and how would you cover a story so saying they they were being totally objective and they weren't spinning the story or coming up with the narrative for the the government or whatever you want to call it where do they get their information? Well, they get their information when it comes to things like shootings or crimes or uh, anything that goes on in government. It's all from government. So crimes, I mean, that's all from police or FBI. That's who you get the information from. Uh, they'll talk to witnesses, but... You know, they don't know. I mean, they don't give them the same credibility. The credibility is given to the police, and that's what they report as the, the official story. And even if they didn't have a bias to the police, well, I think they would they would cover it differently. If I would think at least, but at the same time, how are they supposed to get, you know, other information if the police are are saying this and you try to get a couple witnesses and you do, but you can't get that much information. I mean, you can't really get a lot of information. A lot of times they control you know, if there's cameras there, whether those get released or not, you know, the government's controlling that they're controlling a lot of things. So even if you're um, or if they were being because I was going to say if you're uh, an independent journalist, but if you worked for a government media uh, conglomerate, because that's really what they are. And at the same time, just to uh, I've I've talked about this in the past. I I had the documents on it that the CIA puts interns in with uh, the media. So, and this goes back to even the FBI and Hollywood in the twenties. I mean, it, this, there's a long history of that because we've we've always talked about the U.S. government on this show doing things so much differently for whatever reason and maybe it's because you know all the you know with immigration and and the the United States getting the best of the best in a lot of areas I don't know about anymore but they used to and those people contributing to this whole uh, concept, including the founders, because I believe that it started in the beginning. But, you know, especially when you have a bunch of rich white landowners. And don't get me wrong, I have respect for some of them. 
a lot of respect for some of them, especially Jefferson, although he it was more important the government government was more important to him than freedom because he wanted from what i understand and i'm not a historian or an expert on jefferson but from what i understand he really wanted to put in there you know to free the slaves in the constitution or in the articles of confederation that you know your that in the all men are created equal in in, in the in the dec- declaration of independence where it says that um it doesn't say all white men it 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 does say men which it, it really should say people because it of course excludes women and that, that's another issue um uh, but you, i i can i can overlook that just because of the times and you know, a lot of people say that with slavery, like, oh, well, these were great men, so you can't fault them for not recognizing, you know, the evils of slavery. And I, I, I don't buy that because to own another person, and I know that they looked at it as they weren't people, but to look at anybody as not being a person, I don't care how you were raised, I don't give a fuck Uh, about any of that shit i mean to not be able to realize uh, that these are human beings and that the only difference is they have a different skin color and some different features you know like physical features whatever um and but they're human beings just like everybody else. There's nothing different about them, um, really, except, like I said, the color of their skin. And to not be able to get past that and to form a government and that being more important than making sure that you form a, a a uh, state meaning country that where everybody is free and has rights you know that, that's pretty hard to overlook and i know that from what i understand he want, wanted that in there but he knew that they wouldn't the rest of the states wouldn't agree so it, jefferson's really the only one that i have a lot of respect for and washington to a point because of a lot of the things that, you know, he could have been king. He could have controlled everything if he wanted to. And maybe he just, you know, maybe it was for other reasons. But, you know, again, I'm not a, you know, I went through history in school and in college and whatever and read uh, other things outside of that, you know, to get, because what you learn in school, a lot of it's bullshit. But um, I still can't get past that, you know, even if you're raised that way. The woman part, I can to a point because they felt that, you know, the not that that's okay neither. Um, I'm not saying it's okay at all. I totally support rights for uh and i don't even think you got to say this in this day and age in the united states and other countries yeah um but i don't i i don't see it as an issue i'm sorry i i don't because i believe now you know women are equal but they they weren't always equal and obviously you know they didn't have the right to vote and but I guess I I understand that they got used to these gender roles and that women kind of have a place within the gender roles. But that, although I don't agree with it, I can understand how they were brought up to... um, you know, be that way. And that's okay. That's one thing. But 
I don't care how you were brought up. I, I just I can't get past the having you know the ownership of another human being and thinking that's okay. So anyway, I don't want to get wrapped up in that. Um, my whole point was, you know, this goes back as far as I'm concerned to the beginning of the country or any government for that matter. It's just, of course, the U S did it so much better. And I was listening to George Carlin today and, you know, he mentions this too, how it's, you know, somebody had brought up, it was an old Bill Maher episode back when Bill Maher was more libertarian. Now he's a total, uh, progressive and I can't stand them and I can't even watch his fucking show anymore because it's such bullshit. Um, but th- it was from like 2005. So they, they were talking about new Orleans, but that wasn't the point. The point, um, and I don't even know if it was from, um, that show. Oh yeah, it was. Okay. The point was that like th- one of the guys, <laughs> tried to say, uh, oh, yeah, we have free and fair elections. And, you know, uh, George Carlin's like, no, they, they're meaningless. They're fake. The country's controlled basically by the powers that be. Um, I'm paraphrasing. And it's bullshit. You know, and the guy was like shocked or something that, you know, he's like, no, we have freedom. You have the right to, to vote and you get to choose. And you know, this guy's totally fucking brainwashed and just to these ideas or things that are just, you know, way over his head. And that's why I think George Carlin was so important. Although I wouldn't, I I don't know what to think the more I, I listen to some of his stuff as far as where, what he really wanted, because some of his, things you know he talks about the one percent and stuff like that but he also realizes that you know everything's controlled governments uh, everything's an illusion um it's rigged there's no point in voting so getting that out there that's why he was so important because he was a big star uh comedian wise i mean uh, he wasn't huge in movies and i i think the one reason probably why he didn't really have a huge movie career because he did i mean he was fine in the movies that he was in he was in bill and ted's excellent adventure he was in jersey girl which kind of sucked but his you know he did a good job i liked his part um i liked him in the movies that i saw him in which was like i said very minimal and he did have a TV show for a year, but I think I think George Carlin, um, I believe the show was on like regular TV, and you got to put him in like an HBO show um, because he needs you know to be able to say fuck and stuff like that, and that's just because that's him. I mean, he's just real, or at least he was. He had died in two thousand eight, um, but the the point being is that the guy was trying to convince, you know, Carlin, like, oh, well, we don't have, obviously we have elections and we have this and we have that. And, and he was trying to compare it to like Nazi Germany, the, the, this other guy. And Carlin was bringing up how they do it basically through propaganda and they through illusion, the illusion of freedom. He didn't say it, but that's what he was alluding to. That you don't see that they do it in a different way. They do it in a smarter way. Because it's an illusion. And I've talked about it so many times. And that's why it works. And I don't mean it works like the system works. It's great. I mean, that's why it works for the government to be able to get away with it because they've created this illusion of freedom and of comfortability where people don't want to risk what they have to stand up. 
Whereas if you have a dictator and he comes out and you, you, you're knowingly being oppressed and you don't, you know, live in a nice house and have all these things and, you know, your nice flat screen TV and this and that. And they give you enough so people won't risk that. And then you get married and have a family and that's even worse. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying don't let that stop you. But if there was a dictator that just came out, now, in other countries, I don't know if people, I mean, fought back that much. I mean, I'm trying to think through history. You know, there were there were battles uh, in a lot of countries. Um, South, a bunch of countries in South America comes to mind. But a lot of a lot of the shit that went on, you don't know if the U.S. government was behind it or not. And that's another thing we're going to talk a little about is that they were behind a lot of this shit when it comes to other countries. And I don't know if I, I would kind of call that a false flag in a sense where they installed dictators. So I, I'm going to go through some of those later or in a little while. Um, things that I believe were false flags. And I don't think that everything that happens is a false flag. Like every shooting is fake. And, and when I say fake, I, I don't mean uh, fake. It didn't happen that it was set up by the CIA or something or the FBI or the government. But when the story always comes from them and you don't get a lot of the information and they leave out things and things don't make sense and you're questioning all this stuff and you have to question it. You can't, the people, ex, some people expect you, hey, well, the police, this is what the police said, so this is the facts. And no, it's not. It's just what the police, why is that the facts? So what the government and what the police said is automatically the facts because they say it was. But what if a witness said something different, that's not a fact because they, they get more credibility, even though it should be the opposite, to be honest. But... You need to question things. And if you look at things that they right away released information and they released a video. And so there's been incidents where video has been released, for example. And and this is kind of relates to Sandy Hook. And we'll talk about that more in detail tomorrow. But like. I remember because I think it happened on my birthday um, in 2013, for example, and I don't I don't list this as being a false flag. And, and I know you have people that everything is a false flag. I think you should question everything and look at it because you don't know what to believe and what not to believe. It, seriously. So when it comes to anything that's being used to instill fear or being exploited because they use terrorism like a motherfucker to scare people and not only to scare them into you know just being afraid but afraid enough to do whatever the government says to give up any freedoms that they say I don't know why people, you know, one of the things that I've always said is I, I don't know why people are so scared. What are they scared of that they'd want to give up their freedoms? Even if it was real, I'd rather die than not live free. I mean, what's the point? And that's why, you know, even if I have kids and I and I have a family and, and all of that, I don't want them to live that way neither. So that's why I wouldn't risk their lives directly, but it wouldn't stop me. 
if if they threaten my family or they threaten me or whatever. It's not going to stop me from standing up because I don't want them to end up living that way neither because it's it's not a life. It's not a way to live. It's not worth living. But people are so scared. I don't I don't know what it is. And and maybe it's because I'm just not scared to die. I mean, I don't want to die, but I'm not scared to die. Especially not standing up for something I believe in. So I I I I don't get it. But they they want to keep that, you know, fear along with you know whether they're using it as a build up or using it to pass laws and exploiting their agenda or whatever and people just they uh go along with it so i i understand why um everything i think everything that feeds into that should be questioned but to say that everything is a false flag, that there's never a kid who actually is just nuts and goes into a school and kills people. Like Columbine to me, definitely there was no, you know, there were crazy kids who shot up a school. And in Columbine, you you have video. One of the things about Sandy Hook, of course, is there was never any video and then they can use the well it's the little ki- it's because it was the little kids well they had a video camera when um uh Adam Lanza supposedly was shooting through the front door if there's video of that uh well as far- from what i understand there was a video camera there but we didn't see any video of that we didn't see any video of anything. So, I mean, and that's just one one of the many things. But like the so Columbine, I I don't have any, you know, I I didn't really go into it. And I'm sure there's people that I remember when it happened. Um I've seen video online. I'm sure there's people that will say that that was a false flag. I don't personally believe it was based on what I know about it. Now, I didn't do a bunch of research on it neither, but I don't think that was a false flag. I don't think that the crazy guy in Texas, and people forget about this. They're like, oh, yeah, there's, you know, like there's never been a mass shooting before, you know, the past uh, 10 years or something or Sandy Hook. Um You know, one of the worst ever was at the University of Texas, I think, uh, Texas, Austin in 1962, I believe. And I think they even passed a law after that. Um, So there was a guy just he climbed up a tower and he was just picking people off. And. You know, that wasn't with any, from what I understand, I don't even think it was a semi-automatic. I think it was just the, it might have been a bolt action rifle where he was just, you know, picking people off. And uh, that was, I believe it was 62, but uh, I I might have the year wrong. It was in the 60s, though. But, I mean, to, to this day, I think it's one of the worst um, shootings ever. So, and I believe, like I said, I, I believe there was some reaction to that. I haven't done a lot of, you know, research about that. I'm just aware of it and I've seen it in documentaries and stuff, but, um, I don't, believe that was a false flag but you know who knows um 
That's what I mean. There's not, I don't, I don't see the issue with questioning things. And when people, when you question stuff and say that the, a lot of times it's just that the story that they're giving you is not the real story. It doesn't mean that the government was even responsible. There's a lot of times where the story that they give you is they leave stuff out. They're not honest about exactly. The transparency is not there. So like the Orlando nightclub. And there's people that think that was a false flag. And I understand why. Um, I had heard from somebody who knows somebody in Orlando or whatever, that there were two shooters and that they lost a second shooter and you know they created a narrative that there was only one <laughs> and which makes no sense in in the fact that if there was another shooter and they wouldn't say that there was another shooter and they're going to let somebody get away with it then that other shooter would be to me part of the government there's no way they're going to just uh, ignore that and let that person get away the the thing that i had thought that had happened in there because there's just no way there were 53 people killed and with one guy and it, it it's kind of similar to adam lanza which we'll talk about as far as the, the kill ratio and and whatever um and there's time unaccounted for and that's just i i don't think that that necessarily was a false flag i think the swat team might have came in and killed like half the people to be honest, um, I don't necessarily think that was on purpose. Maybe it was. Um, so, I mean, in that sense, I guess that would be kind of be a false flag. But uh, as far as the guy who did it, I don't know if he had anything to do with, you know, government or, or, or not. You know, that might might have been just a legitimate crazy person, whatever. But Columbine, I definitely think, from what I know, you know, was kids put that together and executed that. Um, the military yard shooting, I believe that was was real as far as. Well, real's the wrong word. I, I believe that that was a non-government. Uh, people don't remember in 2013 in September, and it was right around the 18th. It might have been on the 18th. Um, that's my birthday. But there, uh, a guy went into a navy yard. I think it was in Maryland, and they don't allow them to carry guns. Of course, the the soldiers, which is fucking retarded. So anyway, they don't allow them to carry guns. And he came in there and just, you know, killed. A, I don't think he got that many people, but he killed uh, enough people. I mean, any killing, uh, random fucking killing is bad. And, but they, and they showed the video of it. So, that's the whole thing. You look at like these ones where they're showing the videos and there's no reason. And you, and then you have events where there's cameras everywhere, but they don't show you the video and it shouldn't even be the fucking see. This is the whole thing is that the government and law enforcement, whether it's at a federal level or a local level or both. And I think it's usually both um, and things like this control the whole narrative and all the information and everything and how can you not question that how can you just believe oh this is what they say happened so that that must have happened now in some cases again maybe it did happen but i think the majority of cases it did not i think that even when the government is not involved, you're not, you're usually not getting the whole story. And supposedly, according to uh, the 
laws, which is bullshit, but you know, you pay the salary of these people and you deserve full transparency and you can get this information via a FOIA request, Freedom of Inf- Information Act. And yeah, they will fulfill those, uh, but if it's based on information that they say happened, what does it matter for one? And two, a lot of times they'll, especially with the federal government, it's classified. Or they'll, um, you know, black out a bunch of shit. So it's not like they give you, you can get some stuff that will is definitely helpful because I've talked to people who have gotten information and I, and I think part of that is that they, they don't really g- give a fuck anymore that the government has become more, um, more in a way, not transparent because there's certain things they're not going to tell you. And they're covering all this stuff up, obviously. But there's a lot of things that you can get and information that's been declassified. And and they just don't give a fuck because they know the people don't care. So like the Snowden thing, they were... I, I, I don't even think that they're as mad about it now as they were it's just more of a control and you knowing what they're doing type of thing but most people just listened to that and moved on and didn't give a fuck which is really sad we're being spied on all our data is being collected it's just i i can't get over the fact that to most people it doesn't mean anything how does that not mean anything I just, I don't, I don't get it. So anyway, I want to go through um, things that were actually documented false flags because a lot of people don't know about these and then ones that weren't admitted, but I believe were false flags. And there's a lot. Because the other thing you got to look at is, again, most people don't put things in perspective as far as the population goes. So they look at, you know, on the news, they show people what they want to show. They make it look like it's so dangerous. This happens all the time. That happens all the time. You know, kids are getting kidnapped every fucking you let your kid outside. They're going to get kidnapped. Uh, People are getting murdered all the time uh, by guns, um, mass shootings, all that. It's just a bunch of bullshit. But if that's all they show you on TV, that's what you think. But it's never put in perspective. So when we look at things, they need to be put um, in perspective. So if you have 320 million people, and I think it's like 227 million over 18, that might not be counting people over 65 though. But still, 227 million is a huge amount too. If everybody was so fucking nuts and crazy, you know, we'd have mass shootings every fucking day. There'd be a ridiculous amount of people being killed. Most of the people that are dying on a daily basis are not, for, it's not for murder. It's because they're having heart attacks. They're dying of cancer, which are the two biggest, which account for close to 50% of the deaths, a little less. And, you know, things like accidents, then all the freak things, you know, kind of add up, I guess. Um, But even guns, uh, I believe, what is it? If you don't count suicides, 12,000 a year. I mean, it's not even 1%. It's it's crazy. Um, And, you know, that's what it gets focused on. So... 
anyway, I'm going to go through some of these uh, false flags that have actually been documented by the government. And then I want to go through some that have been um, have not been admitted by the government. And we still have at some point more information on the JFK case, although I put that under admitted by the government because they've admitted that uh, Oswald worked for the CIA. That's been declassified. So did uh, Clay Shaw, who was, if you had seen the movie, he was the man prosecuted that uh, was found not guilty. So I'm going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll look at that. But I just wanted to leave you with, the thought of it is possible that the majority of these really bad things are uh, not planned by the government, but have government involved. Well, they would be planned by them too, but that wasn't the, the way I want to say it. But, uh, the government is involved in it because the majority of people are obviously n- not bad people that just do random things. Now, there's a lot. There's people. Not there's not even a lot, but there's people that you know kill people and do bad things to people. But usually, it's for a reason. These random attacks which is what they usually use. And they exploit the fuck out of things in different ways too, because even school shootings, what's the difference if a kid goes and shoots another kid because he bullied him at school or if he goes to his house or he sees him on the street? Because I guarantee you that's going to be presented totally different. Oh, a school shooting. You know, as opposed to a shooting on the street. What does it matter? The point is, is it's the rationale behind it. But you have that. You also have, as I said, if if there were so many people wanted to randomly kill people, if you really think about it and think about where you live and think about how many random acts of violence random not you know shit where you know and i'm not saying people that kill other people uh for a a, a reason because it may be a stupid fucking reason obviously and most of the time it is um are you know they're definitely not good people and i'm not even saying that they're necessarily sane uh but if people wanted to really just you know destroy the country and kill lots of people it's not a hard thing to do if we had so many people in the country that were just nuts or that were part of a terrorist group but that's not the case it's it's very rare it's You know, I guess if you look at the causes of death, I mean, more people are killed by police, like, Jesus, like 10 times more or something like that than acts of terrorism. The amount of acts of terrorism, and I'm I'm not counting the world, I'm just counting the U.S., within the U.S., because I don't think you can fucking look at, like, they did here in Vegas. <laughs> they looked at stuff that happened in Europe and used that as a reason for people not to carry bags on New Year's Eve. I'll talk about that in a little more detail when we get back, but we're going to take a quick break. Remember, uh, phones are open as well as Skype, um, 702 470 and Skype is Nonpartisan Liberty for All, and you can get all that information at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com as well as our social media, articles, blogs, all that stuff. So please check us out on our website, nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. And we will be back right after this to talk more about false flags 
and documented false flags that were either admitted or unclassified by even the U.S. government. So we'll be back right after this. Nonpartisan Liberty for All, nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. Well, let's now talk to political journalist and author Gerard O'Colman, who joins us from Paris this evening. Thanks very much for joining us again on RT International. You're in the French capital. What's the mood and atmosphere in the city right now? We're being told that there's a state of war uh, and a state of emergency. Uh, this, we've had this before. We had this in January, and for several weeks we had nonstop sirens and uh, nonstop chatter on the radio about the uh, threat from uh, radical Islam and uh, terrorist groups and so on. And so we're having a kind of a replay of that, but it has been, I think, accentuated, and we're going to have an intensification of the uh, media campaign, which is essentially a propaganda, a propaganda campaign to make people in France uh, fear uh, Muslims. Uh, we need to be clear about uh, the origin of the war on terror. The war on terror is, uh, I quote, orchestrated from abroad. These are the words uh, François Hollande used to describe this terrorist attack. Well, the attacks that have been uh, continuing to destroy Syria to uh, massacre its population have also been orchestrated from abroad. They were orchestrated by NATO, and they've been carrying these attacks out against the civilian population of Syria for four years now. And this is a terrorist campaign that is also orchestrated from abroad. And people in Europe need to understand that there is a war uh, that is becoming global that is being waged against civilian populations in particular. It is a form of uh, neo-imperialism and neo-colonialism which uh, aims to divide and conquer uh, European and uh, Middle Eastern and African and the world's population, for that matter, um, and to, to make them submit to a global order that uh, does not serve the interests of most of the people on this planet, but that does serve the interests of a very uh, few uh, ruling um, elite, a uh, very small, tiny, and particularly tyrannical ruling elite. There is no war on terror. There is a war uh, that is being waged using uh, proxy groups, terrorist proxy groups, and they are being used against uh, nation states who are resisting uh, U.S. and uh, Israeli hegemony, and they are also being used as, uh, as a means of disciplining uh, the workforces in Europe in a period of uh, mass unemployment and austerity, you now have uh, terrorist attacks being committed by terrorists funded, armed, and trained by Western intelligence agencies. There is no such thing as ISIS. ISIS is a creation of the United States. We know that from official sources of the U.S. military themselves. Uh, declassified documents from the Defense Intelligence Agency have confirmed that. And the French are now, the French government is now attempting to drum up support for more military intervention in Syria. And what they want to do is they want to get in on the game. The game is almost lost. The Russians have routed much of the Islamic State. You now have Islamic State militants coming into Europe uh, disguised uh, as refugees. Uh, that will destabilize uh, Central Europe. And the French uh, government wants to, uh, to, to get in uh, on the game in Syria and prop up those so-called moderate rebels. There are no moderate rebels, of course, in Syria. There are uh, al-Qaeda and ISIS militants terrorists who have been beheading people, eviscerating people, uh, absolutely cr creating chaos and genocide right across the region. And this does not serve, uh, this does not serve the Syrian people or, 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 or anyone other than the Western corporate elites and their geopolitical interests. What, what do you expect France to do now in the light not only of Friday's terrorism, but 10 months on from Charlie Hebdo? It's not going to ease up on what it's doing, is it? No. Uh, the, the, look, the, the, this it, it much depends on how the French public will react. Whether they, if they will, uh, we are being bombarded now with a uh, media propaganda campaign. It's just nonstop talk. Uh, where we're told not to go out in the street. Uh, we're supposed to be fearful and and, and keep quiet and so on. Um, I think there is going to be a campaign against dissidents in France. They're very worried about um, the new media that has emerged in recent years. And they are very um, worried about the alternative media. So I think 
there you will see, uh, we saw this actually after the uh, attacks in January, you will see a conflation of terrorism and uh, dissidents. So uh, one of the tools which uh, the media, the mass media uses to discredit any kind of rational questioning of the established order and particularly the war on terrorism is to uh, deride those who would question the war on terrorism as conspiracy theorists. And I think you're going to see a crackdown on so-called conspiracy theorists and websites that actually uh, publish rational and honest analysis of what is happening. So you're going to see more of that type of intellectual terrorism, which is already at a boiling point in France. I mean, it's got to the point now where you have um, professors um, in universities who are being intimidated. You have s school teachers uh, who are basically uh, being fired for even suggesting that there may be a link between French imperialism and terrorism. There was one case recently, for example, of a, a school teacher who uh, almost lost his, lost his job when he suggested there might be a link between uh, French foreign policy and terrorism. So you, we are going through a period of uh, deep uh, intellectual terrorism and, of course, these, uh, these random terrorist acts, which are a form of low-intensity uh, civil war. I think that the current crisis, the refugee crisis, which is really a form of coercive engineered migration because they could have easily have been prevented, this form of coercive engineered migration is going to make this a lot worse and it is going to create the conditions of civil war. It is a natural consequence, of course, of globalization, of financial capitalism. This is essentially what it leads to. I mean, it leads to a breakdown of society. And the only way in which they can kind of keep everybody down is by a uh, policy of divide and conquer. So you're going to see a situation where you've got a very much a Wahhabized working class in France. They're being Wahhabized by the allies of the French political elite, the Saudis and the Qataris. They're building Wahhabite mosques all over the place. Uh, and that is going to Wahhabize the youth, and they're going to be then used as pawns, if you like, in much bigger geopolitical wars, wars, proxy wars against Russia, proxy wars against Iran and the Middle East, and so on. And that is going to create massive social unrest. It's mm -hmm. going to divide working people uh, against each other. And uh, the only people who are going to actually benefit from this are the war contractors, the military industrial media intelligence complex. So in a, whatever way you look at this, I don't know who exactly did, uh, committed this attack and this atrocity, but uh, the real people who are responsible, whether directly or indirectly or consciously or unconsciously, is the French government, because they have been complicit in terrorism in the Middle East and all over Africa. And that needs to be understood. And if we don't understand that, this is going to continue and it's going to deteriorate. We will find ourselves in a situation under military uh, military uh, law, martial law, if this can continues. So pick you up it really the, needs to be analysed and understood. Can I pick you up on the issue of migrants and refugees? Because one of um, the terrorists appears to have been um, a French citizen, another a recent migrant to the country. What do you think this will do to France's policies towards the migrant crisis? Well, I think there is sufficient evidence to, to suggest strongly, in fact, that the current crisis, I mean, the, 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 the migration crisis is something that is ongoing, and there are different waves. You've got uh, different waves coming up from Libya, you've got the ones coming up from Syria and up through the Balkans. But the current re kind of refugee crisis, as it were, is um, what uh, I would refer to as coercive uh, engineered migration. This is a term used by Kelly Greenhill, a U.S. academic, who wrote an interesting book on this, uh, whereby she shows that uh, migration can be used as a tool from by one state to destabilize another state. In this case, it's definitely being used by the United States and Turkey to destabilize the Balkans, uh, Mitteleuropa, which would be uh, Hungary, and of course Germany. And the reason, the geostrategic reasons of this are basically go back to classical uh, geopolitics, which is Har Halford Mackinder's theory uh, of the world, of dividing the world island. That is to say, you divide um, the Eurasian Peninsula uh, from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, you create an intermarium there so that you prevent German and Russian unity. And that is why Germany essentially is being uh, kind of overrun with, with people who are themselves uh, victims of globalization, but they are now being instrumentalized and used as weapons of globalization. And this is one of the key uh, contemporary strategies of U.S. imperialism. You use the consequences of globalization as further tools to further globalization. And um, I think there is not going to be, there is no policy in Europe to, to 
to control uh, immigration or anything like that. I think that the, the, key, the key question here is not actually controlling immigration. The key question is stopping this geopolitical destabilization of Europe. Uh, and uh, some countries are attempting to do that. Hungary is attempting to do, do that. Bulgaria is attempting to a certain extent to do that. Um, in other words, trying to find out who's an actual refugee and who isn't. They're prioritizing women and children, for example, in Hungary. Um, that's a rational approach. But of course, uh, Viktor Orban of Hungary has been demonized by the European Union for his insistence on implementing the uh, mm. laws of the European Union of, and of the Hungarian nation state. Here, you're, you're in a situation where the French government is totally uh, uh, subordinate to U.S. dictates. This is a country that has been completely taken over by U.S. imperialism, just as Germany. And France doesn't really have a foreign policy. It does okay. whatever Washington tells it to do. Okay, it's um, always good to get your thoughts on this. Gerard O'Connor, thanks very much for joining us from Paris this Saturday evening. See, which is designed to appear as if someone else performed it. And these acts are often used to give pretext for political or military action. Many believe 9-11 was a false flag operation aimed at gaining support for war in the Middle East. And the recent coup in Turkey is also suspected as being the work of current President Recep Erdogan. But have any of these operations ever been proved? Yes, our title kind of gave that away. So let's take a look at seven confirmed false flag attacks. <laughs> In at seven, the TP Ajax project. Between August 15th and 19th, 1953, the Iranian Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh was overthrown from government, and his downfall had long been desired by the governments of the UK and the USA. But before deposing Iran's most senior minister, first he had to be discredited. To this end, the U.S. government ordered the CIA to use sympathetic local Iranians to carry out false flag attacks on mosques and important public officials, while blaming these incidents on Iranian communists loyal to Mossadegh's government. Nice work, America. I bet we won't see Ben Affleck do a film about that anytime soon. Many Islamic leaders were harassed by these agents, and when one prominent Muslim cleric's home was bombed, this turned the tide against the incumbent government for good. With Mossadegh gone, the Shirah of Iran's rule was strengthened, and both he and the Iranian people lived happily ever after, until he himself was overthrown in 1979 in favor of the fundamentalist regime which remains to this day. Whoopsie daisy! Number 6. Operation Himmler Historians still aren't 100% sure if the Reichstag fire was a false flag attack, but we do know of many Nazi actions which were, several of which took place on August 31, 1939. On this day, a series of incidents devised by SS Reichsfuhrer Heinrich Himmler helped convince the German people they were under attack by Polish insurgents. These operations took place under the leadership of Reinhard Heydrich and involved staged attacks on railways, communication systems, and the general public. The most infamous false flag occurred at the Gliwitz radio sender station, where concentration camp victims dressed as Polish soldiers were told to attack the station before they were shot by the Gestapo and left at the scene of a recent anti-German radio broadcast, a broadcast which had been made by the Germans themselves. To prevent identification, the prisoners then had their faces smashed in, with the Gestapo referring to these incriminating decoy prisoners as canned goods. This incident, along with the rest of Operation Himmler, gave Hitler the pretext he needed, and the very next day, Germany invaded Poland, kicking off the world's most devastating game of stop hitting yourself. At 5. The Anthrax Accusation The 2001 Anthrax terror attacks occurred one week after 9-11, making them the most unnecessary sequel since Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. The first movie tied off everything I needed to know about the Paul Blart universe, and now you've gone and ruined it. Thanks, Hollywood. Anyway, these attacks involved letters containing deadly anthrax spores being mailed to media outlets and two Democratic U.S. senators. Five people died and 17 were injured, and after a lengthy investigation spanning several years, 
the FBI concluded the most likely culprit was a government scientist named Bruce Edwards Ivins. Ivins killed himself when he knew charges were about to be brought against him, but so far there's no definitive proof that he acted on government orders. However, what senior FBI officials have admitted is that they were told by the White House to blame the attacks on Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda? You remember. They were in the ISIS origin movie? The White House also demanded that links to Iraq be fabricated by the Bureau, despite no evidence of involvement in the attacks by either party. So while the government may not have organized the anthrax mailings, they definitely hijacked them for their own false flag fantasies. Number 4. A Presidential Plot In 2008, two minibuses driving on the border between Georgia and Abkhazia were carrying Georgian citizens looking to vote in parliamentary and presidential elections when their vehicles were attacked by assailants wielding automatic weapons and grenades. Somehow, nobody died, but the three casualties were rushed to a hospital where Georgian President Saakashvili later visited for a few opportunistic bedside photos. Saakashvili then claimed on television that the attack had been orchestrated by the Abkash or sympathetic Russian forces trying to disrupt the country. And this incident provided a useful distraction from the fact that many Georgians were extremely critical of their recently embattled president. But an investigation by a Georgian documentary team later discovered that a camera crew from the pro-government channel Rostavi 2 had been in position to film the attack well before it began. Additionally, a United Nations inquiry found that the attackers came from well within the Georgian side of the border, and in 2013, two former Georgian security officers were charged with exceeding official powers and committing domestic terrorism. So for probably the first and only time in his entire life, Vladimir Putin was innocent. 3. Terror in Paris and Nice Sadly, Terror attacks in French cities are nothing new, but the incidents we're referring to in this entry actually date back to the 1970s and 80s. During this time, three terror bombings took place in Paris, Nice, and Cannes, where 30 people were injured and one killed. Initially, blame was placed on an extremist Zionist group called the Masada Action and Defense Movement after anti-Islam leaflets bearing the Star of David were found at the scene. And since all of the targets had been either pro-Palestinian locations or accommodation frequented by North African immigrants, it was thought that Islamophobic Jewish terrorists had carried out the attack. However, this was exactly what the neo-Nazis behind it wanted you to think. The attacks were actually organized by the far-right French and European Nationalist Party. And in 1988, 18 of its members were arrested for the bombings. Their intention had been to start a race war between Jews and Arabs in France. Because apparently racial tension is something we needed more of. Hooray! Race war! Number 2. The Levon Affair Only one year after the USA and UK's Operation Ajax, Israel decided it wanted a piece of the delicious false flag pie and framed the Muslim Brotherhood and Egyptian communists as having been responsible for a series of bombs planted across locations in Egypt. These locations included cinemas, libraries, and an American diplomatic facility. But thankfully, none of these bombs managed to kill or injure anyone. Phew, case closed. Or perhaps not. This campaign was exposed in 1955, and Israeli Defense Minister Pinhach Levan was forced to resign but the false flag mission's objectives had already been attained. Israel's goal was to force Britain to keep its troops stationed at Egypt's Suez Canal as a form of protection. But what it actually led to was a series of events that still affect the world to this day. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now I'm sitting in my room watching the TV like I'm sure most of you are, watching this whole uh, shooting uh, incident in San Bernardino unravel. And uh, at this point in time, we know that there's been 14 people killed at the Inland Regional Center. Uh, they're saying that there's still some people on the loose that they're looking for. And this is all because of a dispute at a party. Now, for some reason, EOD teams have been called, and there's sus suspicious uh, devices that have been found, which to me prove that this is probably premeditated. You don't just get into an argument at a party. 
put on some, you know, tactical assault gear that they're calling it and put on face masks and then just hap- happen to have bombs ready. That's suspicion number one. That's really strange. Then you go in and you start doing some research like I have. Well, quite frankly, there have been multiple active uh, shooter drills at this exact same location at the Inland Regional Center. Now, there have been so many that nurses, if you read these reports, there's one that's out right now by LA Times. Right here, it's called San Bernardino Shooting. Dramatic video shows police storming Inland Regional Center. It says, at first, Dorothy Vong assumed it was just another drill, like all the other ones she's had at her work at the Inland Regional Center, where she's a nurse. The staff works with clients and parents of clients who are sometimes angry. They have active duty drills every month. She texted her husband, Mark, at 11 a.m. Drill started. She walked to a window nearby and filmed a video as law enforcement sprinted towards the building. Oh, that is scary, a voice says calmly in the background. They're all geared up, rifles and everything. In the background, someone laughs. She texts her husband again. Well, it's real. We're now locked in our office. So you have one location where there's been multiple active shooter drills. And the workers there are going, all right, they're laughing and joking. Like, all right, this is another drill. And then we're supposed to believe that because of a dispute at a party, it ends up here at this Inland Regional Center where there have been active duty or active shooter drills. And then there's EOD being called for suspicious uh, packages or whatever like that. And they're saying that there could be some bombs out there. All right, if that's happening, that means it's probably premeditated. This isn't some spur-of-the-moment random thing. So there's definitely a lot of weird things to look at when we're looking at this entire incident. Um, I'll scroll down my page. I've posted quite a few things about this. Right here, it shows the San Bernardino County Fire On December 1st yesterday, post a uh, picture. It says, County Fire participates in active shooter exercise. Right down the road, a battalion chief and nine firefighters from the high desert participated in an active shooter exercise held at Victor Valley Community College on November 30th. Working closely with our public safety cooperators, firefighters practiced mass casualty incident triage techniques and patients. So there's been multiple kinds of these uh, active shooter drills. And you can see people laying down. It looks like they're getting first aid. And this is directly from, let me see if I can pull down the the lighting on this. This is from their actual page right here from the San Bernardino County Fire Facebook. This is fishy. You've got Alex Jones interviewing Donald Trump earlier in the day. That completely trumps everything in the news. And then just hours later, you have this. It sweeps everything away in an area where there have been multiple, multiple mass casualty training exercises. You know, I'm going to read some some posts from people who are uh, ex-military buddies, you know, They're saying that uh, people are getting word that the body of a dead suspect outside of a black vehicle is a female who spoke Arabic. Um, You have on MSNBC and CNN, they're calling the shooters actors uh, in multiple uh, multiple different uh, segments. And then one time the guy going actor, I mean shooter. Then you have SWAT was training nearby. Gunmen had masks. They find SUV extremely quick. Shootout, there's no tire marks. Looks like they just parked or uh, was it staged to me? You know, there's uh, other guys out here. Why is the government screaming gun control, gun control, blah, 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 blah. These are fully automatic, illegally purchased guns. How does gun control stop that? So this is definitely an interesting event. We'll definitely keep a close eye on this. Stay tuned for more reports as they unfold at InfoWars.com. I'm Joe. Now is the family as one of the 14. Uh, her name is Benetta Betbedal. Her husband Arlen is here. Her kids, Colin, Ethan, and Jolene. Also Ken Paulson, a family friend. Thank you all for, for being with us. And I'm so sorry. Oh, they look really shattered, and don't they? Have a look circumstances. at them. Um, Jolene, I know you wanted to, to talk about your mom. What do you want people to know about your mom? Well, overall, she was, like, an amazing person. Like, she was so nice. Like, she always, like, supported me in everything I did. And, 
like she was nice to honestly everyone and it's sad for mostly all the families really but like How she was holding just, up you're so strong. well like because like she used to tell me like um that if like i do go 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 well 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 what's going on here here she is saying that a mum says, if I do go, if I do go, I'm sorry, but um, your mum got killed at the scene. What's this, if I do go? Um, where's she going? Did she pre-warn you that she was going somewhere? Maybe to Tel Aviv with all the other 13 supposed dead? If I do go, there's something not right here. Um, I want you to, like... I want everybody to, like, stay strong. I don't want you guys, like, grieving or, like, crying. That's, like, what I've taken into place and, like, just going off that. What I've taken into place. 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 I don't want you guys grieving or crying when I get taken into a place. What do you mean, taken into a place? She's virtually saying that her mother's telling her that she's going to die. Or, or being taken away somewhere into a place. I mean, this is so sus, you just can't believe it. And I have all my friends that are, like, contacting me, supporting me. And so just... And that helps. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, this girl would give Cassidy Stay a run for her money. Look at that. There's not a single tear being shed by this girl. And this is the day after her mother died. Just shrugs the shoulder. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I'll be strong. Yeah, no worries. I mean, she was only mother. No big deal. I can handle that. I can, I can get along without her. As I give a big smile to Anderson Pooper. Yeah, no worries. I mean, anyone that believes this is real, God. God, I just, I'm lost for words. You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host, Dave Bourne. Call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in. Username, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Nonpartisan Liberty for All, and we are back. Again, check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. And subscribe to all of our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter. I think that's it. Facebook and Twitter, but uh, four different Facebook pages that focus on some different things. So check those out and check out all the articles. One of the series that I did, uh, which I'm still not finished yet, I've been kind of lazy on this, is the war on drugs and why they shouldn't go back to how they were before 1914, basically totally legalized and on the shelves. And I think I wrote six articles. I call them articles slash blogs um, on those. And I still need to continue with that. We're also going to do some YouTube videos. I know I've been talking about this for a while and I had uh, days off for the holidays where I had planned to focus more on, um, or not more, but <laughs> I had planned to focus, period. I started putting together some stuff, at least uh, in the documents, uh, to film some YouTube videos, five to 10 minute videos on some of the stuff that we talk about on the show. So hopefully I will get that together soon and get those up there on the YouTube channel. And you can find that just search nonpartisan liberty for all um, and you'll find it. But the specific link is at nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. So I played a couple clips, not necessarily that I agree with all those uh, clips. One of them was the shooting in Orlando. And just to uh, get the opinion of someone had broken down the 
statement from one of the victim's daughters, I guess. Which is kind of weird. I, I think she was married and her husband and her daughter were there, but she was at a gay club. Uh, well, that doesn't mean, I mean, I guess she could have been with a friend that was gay. I, I don't know. You know, I didn't even think about that part of it. Um, anyway, so I don't necessarily agree with that, but it, she did seem, uh, this is the type of stuff that people will analyze, um, how families react and stuff like that. But she did seem very like unfazed by her mother dying. Now, it, something like that is hard to tell. I mean, different people react in different ways and, and grieve differently and, and deal with things differently. So it, it all, it all depends Anyway, I want to go through the false flags briefly that have been documented by the government, uh, whether it, they were declassified or they were supported by government personnel that came out and actually admitted what had happened. Um, of course, for the Spanish uh American War in the one in 1898 because I know well the other one was the Mexican American War actually I believe it was called in the 1840s the Maine the sinking of the Maine now supposedly Maine wanted to avoid war with the U.S. at all costs they had a bad not a bad, but they didn't have a a sufficient uh, navy at the time. And this was really the first kind of overseas type war. Um, before that, everything had taken place, at least bordering or in uh, the U.S. Um, now, a lot of it, I, I believe, took place in um you know bordering the u.s anyway because a lot of the you know the spanish territory um that was there but i don't know i think most of that they got already from mexico so i don't know a lot about the i remember the spanish-american war but vaguely i don't remember all the specifics because I used to mix that up with the Mexican-American War. So I believe they had all that territory from the Mexican-American War that used to be Spain's territory. And I think they got, like, the Philippines out of it and Puerto Rico or something. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But it um, they manipulated that whole thing. Um the the main was not sunk by i don't believe the main was sunk at all actually um and the whole thing was manipulated by newspaper owner william randolph hearst and the rockefellers of course uh financed the war in spain so they're them together wanted that war to occur but it was prompted by the sinking of the main by spain and that rhymes um and again i'm not going to get into these in detail because some of them i don't know all the details i just know that they either have been admitted and validated that these were false flags or declassified. So um, if I, you know, don't get into enough detail or uh, am not sure about something, um, that's why. I mean, these are not, these are things that I have general knowledge of, but I, I don't, depending on what it is, I may know more than something else, but uh, I'm just going to, you know, go through them briefly. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin, which started Vietnam, the Vietnam War. 
Now, from what I understand, there were two ships. One of them was never sunk at all, and they said it was. And then the other one was not... I'm not sure if they attacked it, that the U.S. attacked their own ship, or it was... I know there was Israel was actually mentioned, but on the second ship, Admiral Stockdale, who actually ran for vice president with um, Ross Perot, he was his uh, vice presidential uh, running mate. It's funny because they made fun of him in um, Saturday Night Live, and I I haven't I've seen pictures of him. Um, I did see him talk once before. I I don't remember, but I don't. <laughs> Their impression of him was really funny, but I I don't know if it was spot on or similar to the real uh, Admiral Stockdale or not. But that's what started the Vietnam War or what they used to say, well, Vietnam attacked us. Vietnam had nothing to do with it. And that came out later from declassified documents. Uh, Pearl Harbor, which it was a real event, but... They knew about it and provoked it, and that obviously led the U.S. into World War II and got the support of the people because that's what they needed. So it could have been, well, I don't know if it could have been avoided, but supposedly the U.S. was doing things. I think they might have put an embargo on Japan. They They were... It's like they were antagonizing Japan, like, you know, come attack us type thing. And at the same time, they knew way before. And I guess I guess they ha- had moved, like, the more expensive ships. And, and people have come out and said they warned Roosevelt, uh, multiple uh, military personnel and other personnel in the government, that Pearl Harbor is going to be attacked. So... They uh, essentially sacrificed, I think it was a couple thousand people um, for nothing because they probably could have prepared and either attacked Japan first or uh, tried to. I, I, I believe I heard that they could have actually negotiated, talked to Japan and could have avoided it uh, altogether. Now, would that have meant that Germany would have, quote unquote, won World War II, meaning conquered all of Europe if the U.S. didn't get involved? I don't know. There is an interesting um, show on, I, I still think that wouldn't have affected the United States. I mean, it would have affected them in that, you know, trade and things like that. And it would have affected them as far as uh, financially because they ended up with all the gold after World War II and a lot of money because Europe was decimated and broke. But I don't think that it ever would have got to the United States. And, you know, there's that famous uh, statement by the Japanese, which people should fucking listen to now. Um, along with other reasons why people should have guns. But the, the Japanese said they would never invade the U.S. because behind every blade of gla- glass, grass is a gun, is a uh, person with a gun. So being that even back then, the U.S. was a heavily armed society. Now, I don't know what kind of weapons people had you know, in the 40s, I, I know already in the 20s, I mean, they had those uh, Tommy guns and things like that. So I don't know if like now where uh, we have AR-15s and AK-47s, if a lot of people had those back then, if they had, um, you know, similar military type weapons or whatever. But having an armed populace obviously is not only a deterrent for your own government. It is for other, uh, governments to invade your country. So, uh, 
But there is a series, The Man in the High Castle, I believe it's called. Uh, season two had just come out a couple weeks ago, and I, I got right, I went right through it. Um, so if you've seen season one, just to let you know, season two is out. If you haven't, it's a uh, Netflix, uh, or is it a Netflix an original? No, it's a Prime. It's an Amazon Prime original. So you you'd have to uh e- either buy it or get Amazon Prime. I think Amazon Prime is worth it. It's it, especially if you buy a lot of stuff on Amazon. That, and that's why I got it because the free shipping on all the Prime items, which mostly every item is Prime. There's a couple that are not. You get free 2-day shipping. And I was buying a lot of stuff uh for my studio. Um not just the main things, but I I was buying uh wires all the time because um and i might have to buy some more i still have something i need to hook up so anyway i I think it's worth it and and basically the show is their version of what would happen if japan and germany won the war and they break up i did a show on this they break up um and i should do a show for uh season two but they break up the U.S. into Japan is the r- controls the West Coast, and of course Germany controls the East Coast. I don't know why I said of course. What I was going to say was of course uh, all the Jewish people live in the West because uh, Germany uh, obviously uh, they would have problems living there um, in the German territory. Unless I, I guess they didn't know, um, and that's possible. I mean, I'm half Jewish. People wouldn't know unless I told them. Uh, so, anyway, if you have Amazon Prime, definitely check that out. It's uh, I thought season two was better than season one, and the only thing that the the thing that's good is you can like go right through the series, you know, at your own pace. Everything's out there. But you'll probably watch it in a couple of days and then you'll be like, fuck, now I got to wait like another year or, you know, another nine months for the next season. And I think there's only, there were only 10 episodes. So it, it sucks in that sense because you want to, I mean, it's good for them, but it's like, yeah, you know, hey, I, I want to see, you know, more. So hopefully next season they'll, they'll add some episodes, but, um, I thought this season was better than last, so we'll see what happens. They also got some stuff going on where it's like there's an alternate, it's like some supernatural science fiction stuff going on where there's an alternate universe almost, and people have visions of it, and one of the Japanese generals is in it for part of the the a show i don't want to ruin anything but he i don't know if he's just uh daydreaming or he's actually you know they're going through dimensions and there's these things with videos where it shows a different alternative uh future where the u.s did win like what happened actually happened um what what happened in history did happen as opposed to the show so anyway uh i don't want to talk any more about that but definitely check that out maybe i'll do a show on um season two um because i thought i thought it was it was pretty good um and there's a lot of things that uh, we could talk about regarding that so they so far we have three wars so why not four the sinking of the Lusitania in 1914, a lot of people know about this. It was a, they knew it was going to get sunk. They purposely put ammunitions on it to bring to Britain. Um, Germany had told them that, you know, if they do that, that they would th- you know, sink the ship that they weren't supposed to. I think they had a blockade or something like that. And it was like a passenger. They set it up as a passenger ship and then I think put ammunitions on it. And the whole thing was set up and people were killed. And it just, 
it, they you then they used it to justify getting into World War One, which there was no business for the U.S. to get into World War One. I. I I can see people talk about World War Two and justifications to get into World War Two, although. I don't know what my thoughts are on that. I, I'd have to do a lot more research on that to give a, an intelligent opinion regarding World War II. But any other war besides the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812, I believe the U.S. was attacked, but I'm not. I'd have to go back to that too because I don't remember the details. But definitely every war since the Spanish American War was unnecessary, no no question. And even the Mexican American War, um I don't know that that was a it, it, at least that was, you know, over territory that the United States at the time, but um, I don't know that that was necessary, something I'd have to look more into, but since then, uh, from the Spanish-American War to now, I don't think the United States sh- should have been involved in any war, with the exception of possibly World War II, and even that. I, you know, especially with the fact that they kind of invited the attack on Pearl Harbor so they could get into the war, um, which I believe could have been avoided as well. So, and at the same time, people forget or aren't aware that Hitler, you know, the whole thing was not about Hitler. It was about national socialism. And, you know, there's a good book that I read by Jim Mars, The Rise of the Fourth Reich, which basically says, and and, and um, when I mentioned uh, George Carlin earlier on that same show, he, he, he kind of said this in different words, but they were talking about fascism, but it's, you know, kind of similar to National Socialism, which is where Nazi comes from. But they never, one, they supported National Socialism and all of these billionaires like Prescott Bush, the Bush family uh, grandfather, the father of uh, George Bush, H.W. Bush, um the Ford Foundation, I believe, um, Henry Ford, uh, other families as well. Uh, a lot of the elite families actually, up until the war, funded Hitler. And, you know, David Rockefeller even went to Germany in the 1930s. And he wrote about it in his book, of course. He gives a different version than probably what really happened Um, Now, I don't know that for a fact. That's just speculation. But he says he went there for some other reason. Uh, However, I believe the real reason, you know, was the same same thing. I mean, they were to help fund um, Hitler and fund National Socialism. And essentially... National Socialism was imported into the the United States, both literally and figuratively, as they imported doctors, scientists, stuff like that, uh, or, or people in those fields. And you look at that's when I when I think about those fields, and you know the medical field especially, and look at all of these. Um, you know, things like vaccines and and medical practices and things that are accepted as common knowledge that I believe, and I've said this before, a lot of them came from the Germans and psychology, a lot of that, and a lot of the 
fucked up part of uh, mental illness, which I, I have different thoughts on mental illness. Um, I have mentally ill family members, but I, you know, I I would say that I don't believe in mental illness in the same way that most people do. Um, I don't know. I, I have, a, I'm a, a conflicting, a conflicted opinion when it comes to, um, mental illness, because a lot of it is, is perception. Um, and, uh, you know, there's also brain chemistry and things like that. And I understand that. And if you don't have the normal, just like any other functioning part of your body, if you, if it's not functioning normally, I, I understand that. But um, I think a lot of the uh, negative side of psychology and mental illness that ended up being incorporated into not only things at the time that were, I think, some crazy experiments or experimental drugs and and things that they did which the CIA also, I think, used for mind control stuff, but um, that it still affects how things are today. Um, so at the same time, National Socialism uh, wasn't defeated. It was just uh, Germany and Hitler were defeated. But what... Jim Morris talks about in that book is how all these people supported it and basically they brought it here to try to implement it in the United States. Now, obviously, as I talked about the illusion of freedom, the other thing that the U.S. has done is implement things generationally over time. And that's always been their plan. And that's, you know, you can see at least in my opinion, that coming out more and more aspects of a lot of them have been hidden really for years. I mean, basically building the empire side of it, but even the, you know, the way, how the government's going and taking freedoms and uh, oppressing people and things like that. So, uh, my point was on that is that Hitler should have never been able to fund that war in the first place if it wasn't for the U.S. Um, of course, the second Iraq war, they said there were WMDs. Of course, there wasn't. They just... They lied about reasons to go in there. The J- JFK assassination, it hasn't been technically admitted, but it has been uh, declassified that um, Lee Harvey Oswald did work for the CIA. I mean, it's obvious how they he went to Russia. He defected to Russia and was able to come back. And then, this is in the 60s. Um, they gave him money to travel, a passport. I mean, there's so many, um, things that, you know, point to that, but that was admitted. And I don't know what year 2054 comes to mind, but that they buried all this information or whatever, and that's supposed to be opened. Um, you know, I think 2054, they want to make sure all the people that were associated with government at the time are dead and maybe their immediate family members are dead too. So it will probably come out that, you know, the president uh, at the time, well, vice president at the time, Johnson, uh, you know, knew about it. And of course, military, the uh, former joint chiefs that he fired, the Dulles brothers or uh, who did he fire? Alan Dulles, that they were, they had something to do with it, that the, you know, it was basically a coup of the government. They assassinated uh, a president. 
and some people still think Oswald acted alone. And it's crazy. A government, I mean, that alone, a government that can assassinate its own president and that would, how can you not question everything? You know, of course, the idea is they presented it that that's not what happened. So some people believe that story, but the majority of people, I believe, think that they're at least not being told the full story. And even if they were, I don't know at this point that it would make a difference because then there's always, well, that was back then. That wouldn't happen now. Oh, no, it would happen now a lot more easier. It would be a lot more easier now to do something like that than it was back then. And that's why, you know, presidents and congressmen and and you know you walk the line and make sure you don't go astray i'm surprised ron paul uh was never uh, killed in a plane crash or car accident heart attack something like that and you know sometimes stuff like that is well, you know, obviously we don't do stuff like that because we would have killed Ron Paul. It's just like someone that said to me um, on the show before that, oh, well, if we didn't have freedom, then you wouldn't have a show. And it's like, what do they care about me? I'm not making any type of difference. And Ron Paul did make a huge difference as far as how a lot of people thought. But what did it change? Really nothing. They went forward with their agenda, and it just continued. So that's where I think the U.S. is more cocky, where they don't care about a lot of this stuff coming out because no one's doing anything about it anyway. The, your average person's just going to ignore it, and there's so many distractions that that's what they're focused on. Uh, the underwear bomber, it came out that in 2012 he was working for the CIA. That was the guy on a plane in 2009. I believe his father was a diplomat. Um, I don't know what the purpose of that is. I, th- I think they talked about that, but um, I don't recall what the, what the purpose. I, I It might have been to you know, scare people, look, there's more terrorism. And, you know, every so often you got to have terrorist attacks because if you don't, it's like, you know, well, why do, why are we putting all this money into terrorism? Why are we doing, you know, all this? And, um, the Shah of Iran, which was installed by the government, if you want to call that a false flag, uh, anthrax was blamed on Al Qaeda right after 9/11. The letters that were being sent to Congress, Syria and chemical weapons, and I call that a false flag because I believe the chemical weapons were supplied by the CIA to the quote unquote rebels. Or at the time, I think they were Al Qaeda. Then all of a sudden, you had ISIS. Uh, I'll talk a little about them. Um, So I would call that a false flag because they tried to blame it on Assad as a reason to attack. And they almost did attack. But people did actually speak out about that. And people didn't stop it. It's not like if if Obama wanted to do it, he would have done it. But he thought about not that anything would have happened to him, but his legacy and, you know, all of that type of shit not having the support of the people and so he chose not to do it but it came out that it was the rebels that actually used the chemical weapons and not only that is there's so much video that is that is is falsified as well Cohen intel pro it's not really a false flag but it was a program that where the FBI was monitoring 
the Black Panthers, Malcolm X, civil rights leaders, anti-Vietnam groups, um, Martin Luther King during the 60s and 70s. I didn't know about this, but I guess in the during prohibition, the government somehow was poisoning alcohol. I mean, I think it's pretty much poison <laughs> as it is, but they were putting something in it, um, the illegal alcohol. Now, I don't know how they got to it unless I'm mistaken. And it was when it was legal, uh, which is possible. But I think believe it was when you know during prohibition from what i understand but i could be wrong but they were poisoning it and a bunch of people died because of it and that was to try to help promote prohibition from what i understand as a positive thing and keep alcohol illegal Then, of course, uh, there was Operation Gladio, which had to do with bombing Europe, uh, places in Europe, and blaming it on Russians or communist terrorists. And I believe that was in the during the Cold War. And then there's ones that they haven't come out and admitted, but I think there's enough information to support them. And I actually believe that all of these were... Uh, the government was involved in all of them. The Reagan, Ronald Reagan assassination attempt. There's no doubt in my mind. John Wilkes Booth was a friend of the Bush family. Actually, his brother was supposed to have uh, dinner with one of the Bush brothers. I think the other one that's not in politics, Neil Bush. Um, I think his name is Neil. The next day um so also david rockefeller had written in his book that reagan was the only one to come out and talk about the cfr uh the trilateral commission i don't know if he mentioned the bilderberg group because they were pretty secret uh, back then but he might have as well and he he was you know, he had issues with them. And then Rockefeller wrote that, you know, about Reagan having all these issues with them and that he had them to the White House in 1984. So I don't know if they meant to kill him because, you know, H.W. was their guy and he would have been president or it was a warning because from what I understand, he almost died anyway. So. It might have been a, you know, if he dies, he dies. If he doesn't, we're going to let him know, like, hey, you're going to uh, do what we say or we're going to kill you. Oklahoma City, uh, I've talked to somebody who was actually n- not... Eh, was involved in that uh, movement at the time. The, um, I forget what they called it. The, uh, fuck, militia move. No, it wasn't called the militia movement back then, but same thing. And they tried to frame him. They tried to say he knew Timothy McVeigh. There's documents that I've seen them. They're online at PBS that say that, McVeigh made phone calls to his house. Now, I guess what kind of saved him where the FBI fucked up is that he was a junior and the house they said that the calls went to, they thought it was his house. It was his father's house. So he was never uh, charged with anything or anything like that. But it does say that McVeigh came to his house and made calls to his house, which had, which never happened. And that's just one part. Um, A Noble Lie is a really good movie to watch, a documentary regarding Oklahoma City. And there's a couple reasons behind that. There's a law that they passed right after, an anti-terrorist law that they couldn't get through before. 
also there's the theory that there was a bunch of documents because of the you know the federal building and the I, the FBI had an office I believe or maybe it was the AT I know the ATF did but I don't know if whose documents they were but that it had to do with Whitewater and Clinton and things like that of course Clinton you uh as you may know he goes back to being involved in the Iran Contra as governor of Arkansas where they were flying cocaine into the Mina airport in Mina Arkansas which he was totally aware of and his involvement is not quite known um supposedly he was laundering some of that money but that's speculation also I mean there's so many things there was a second guy who then you know the the people that they rented the car from said he was with some other guy they never got that guy um there's no way that 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 truck could have done what it did there's the letter from um McVeigh saying that he you know he was in the military and and was up for some special division and they made it like he didn't get in but he had told his sister that he did and then after that he became you know anti-government and all this stuff like it was a you know it was a setup and then he joined uh the there's a name for it uh, it's not the militia movement um but um it's the same thing where they were training um it that was that was like a a nazi type movement though it wasn't an anti-government they were uh, like anti government they were anti this government and wanted to put in this like a nazi fucking government so i I guess they have a lot in common with uh some of the people that actually the powers that be um or the people that supported hitler but uh there's so much information that there's there's no way and and there's theories that mcveigh actually wasn't killed But, you know, who knows? He could have been, uh, even the way he was caught, like he didn't have a license plate on his car. He had a gun right on his seat. It's like he was asking to get caught um, after. The whole thing is just ridiculous. But he never broke and said that he didn't do it. So there's theories that he wasn't put to death. Um that he may have been put to death, but, you know, he was brainwashed or, you know, he was a Manchurian candidate type person or maybe they they threatened to kill his family. So, you know, th- there's all this stuff that they can do and, you know, who who knows. The World Trade Center 1993 bombing, it actually, it, it that's more, uh, it has been proven because there were, t- there were recordings by, they, the guy who they had in with this supposed terrorist group was run by the FBI and he didn't trust them. So he made recordings of everything and they were, they were going to blow up, which they did. Th- it was supposed to be, you know, one of those things where it doesn't blow up, which is the majority of terrorists, so-called terrorist plots that they stop. That's what it is. They find somebody, they get them to, you know, they coax them into it. They give them all the stuff and then it doesn't blow up. But this one did. And I know that this guy actually sued the government and ended up getting millions. Um, I do know that. And because I I looked into them and there's some things I forget because it was maybe three years ago, three, four years ago when I was looking at it. Um, And I forget all the details, but 
su- supposedly they wanted to blow it up. And then that's why they did Oklahoma City, because that wasn't enough. I think only six people died. And it was, okay, to get this bill through, we need, you know, more than just a little, you know, six people dying at the World Trade Center. But that guy that they were supposedly running, I think what they wanted to do was just pin it on him. And because he had recorded all those conversations, which was smart, he was able to, you know, defend himself and sue the government. I think a lot of those, I, I think I don't know a lot about the some of those details because I think that they're sealed um, in his lawsuit and stuff like that. But uh, that I would put under a another proven uh, false flag. Of course, 9-11, it, to me, there's just so much information about 9-11. Uh, the Afghan war, there's no evidence that Osama bin Laden had anything to do with 9-11. And they never even charged him with it. They had him on the most wanted list for supposed bombings at, I believe it was the consulate and the... the or um, in some country or something like that, or the embassy in a, a U.S. embassy or something. There were there were a couple things that put him on there, but they never charged him with that. And most likely, he died way before um, they supposedly killed him. I mean, the guy was in his 60s. He was on dialysis. And the last, the the video where they say he was talking about it most likely wasn't even him. Um, So that's uh, another one. The Boston bombing, there's no doubt in my mind. I looked at so much evidence that I followed so closely. That was one of the ones where I followed. Uh, government media as well to see how they covered it and all the changes and how many times the story changed and all the bullshit and there's just there's no doubt in my mind and they still never showed the video of them putting the bag down and then they finally I think recently showed it but you couldn't see anything and it's just but they never even showed it to the governor of massachusetts now they're making that movie patriots day um but i did see a scene that actually made me feel better about it although i think they're totally gonna you know uh be pro police pro government i mean the the biggest thing about the boston bombing and what it what it really showed um first the rationale behind it, it it's another terrorist attack it's another you know there there wasn't any terrorist attacks since 911 so their whole thing was just bullshit and they said they wanted to say they stopped all these attacks and whatever and i think they needed another attack now there might have been some other motivation there i don't know but there's just so much information um, that, to me, show that the oldest brother was working for the CIA. I mean, for the the CIA or the FBI, or I think even both of them, to say that the reason that they didn't know he, he was going to um, wherever the fuck he went... Um, back to his uh Kazakhstan or whatever um his his country that uh he came from because they were looking at him was because the name was spelled different i mean he, he, really you he, he got to be fucking kidding me that they don't have software that can identify shit like that 
I mean, and that's just one thing. There are so many uh, different things. I mean, they killed the the guy who supposedly uh, was a friend of his that moved to Orlando. Um, they had, um, you know, like I said, both the FBI, CIA investigated him. I mean, the, the youngest kid was going to college. They were just you know, out partying, whatever. And, uh, you know, there, there's a bunch of other stuff, but I think that they, you know, the CIA went to them all, all of a sudden they became, you know, these devout Muslims yeah, cause they were there to infiltrate the, you know, go to the mosque and, you know, infiltrate who they could and work and work with the CIA and, and look what happened, almost happened with same thing, the guy in 93. So I don't know, of course, you know, what happened regarding what they were told, if them being there had something to do with a drill or whatever, because supposedly there was a drill that day and it was posted by the Boston Globe and then removed later. Um, so it, that to me is just um, totally, there's just so much stuff, but uh, I'm not going to go into it now. I think I did a show on it and, and there was another document that have, that's come out since then as well. Also the scene that I was talking about is they do actually, say uh there's a scene with an interview with it looks like it's his wife it may be the sister but i I think it's his wife that says something about her rights and they're like you don't have any rights basically so i hope it shows the truth there and the other thing is that you know they shot their own officer in a supposed shootout um but didn't come out and admit it to like two weeks later the officer killed at uh what was it mit or harvard there was no evidence that they showed on that i mean and and they cut this kid's throat there's pictures where he comes out of the boat where they tried to kill him in the first place they shot all these bullets into the boat um he was unarmed um it's just you know and and i think that they scared him into saying anything that he's dead if he says anything and or him and his family are dead so i totally think uh that's a setup of course sandy hook we'll be talking about in the next couple of days the colorado movie theater shooting at first i didn't really think so but now i i don't really know it it it's almost like a Manchurian candidate type story uh, from what I looked at, but that I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. And a lot of this stuff, it's hard because you're sitting there trying to get information on something that they don't want you to get information on. And they're the controllers and keepers of that information. But it's just, it, makes no sense he had no recollection but he's just sitting there you know by the car waiting to get caught and you know i'm not saying he didn't do it um i'm saying that possibly he was a you know because he was working with certain things that he might have might have been you know one of those uh manchurian candidates that was brainwashed and we know that for a fact that the government has been working with things like MK Ultra started in what the 50s so i mean assuming they never stopped which i seriously doubt the CIA ever stopped um you know they've been working on with mind control for 60 plus years so who knows what they're able to do at this point there's also this fucking plant that i wasn't even aware of that you can uh, blow it like dust and people will do whatever you say. Vice did a thing on it. Um, And it was actually in um, the show, The OA, 
that uh, is a Netflix original. It was I didn't like the ending of the series. I don't know if they're coming back. Um, I liked the series, but I just didn't like the last episode. Just an aside. Um, or how it ended. It left it open to there could be another season or I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, of course, vaccinations and, you know, who knows uh, what. I mean, it's a built in industry for the pharmaceutical companies they can't really get sued over them unless they get sued in a certain court. They already have an insert that they cause all these things, but they deny when any of them happen. So the percentages are so low. I, I don't know when it comes to vaccines. The swine flu, I didn't even remember that because at the time, I think I was just totally avoiding media. Um, but that, if you go back and look at footage from when they talked about, spoke about the the swine flu and how it was going to, you know, be this big ep- epidemic and nothing happened. The same thing kind of happened with Ebola as well. Uh the Paris attacks, there's been talk the first ones where there were four guys with uh AK47s that that was orchestrated by the CIA and we talked about this before because of France getting closer to Russia than the U.S., that the U.S. is trying to, you know, keep them in line type of thing. And in the last couple of days, the Russian ambassador was murdered right on camera to, uh, sorry, the Turkish ambassador to Russia was murdered right on camera. And supposedly Turkey and Russia were going to broker the ceasefire in Syria without the U.S. or the U.N. Um, So that makes that seem very uh, strange to happen at that time. And I believe that was, was it a week ago? So those are the ones that really stand out to me. Um. We're pretty much out of time, but again, I don't think, I just want to leave everyone with, I don't think everything is a false flag. I think there are things that do happen, but it's very minimal because again, you have to keep things in perspective, how many people are in this country. And if people were that crazy, we'd have so much violence and so many of these things going on. We don't. And the majority of politicians are liars, they're deceitful, they're promoting their own agenda. So they can get away with pretty much anything. The government can get away with anything. The CIA, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Everything they do is classified. So what is, why is it so far-fetched to believe that? And at the same time, remember that all of this information that you're getting from government media, where it's coming from and who it's coming from. Not only that, it's being presented to you by government media. But even if it wasn't, it's still controlled when it comes to these type of events. It's controlled by the government, whether that government is the police or the federal government or state government. I mean, these are all parts of government. And they're controlling the narrative. So that's where the information is really coming from. And they're doing everything they can to push their agenda of more control and their ultimate agenda to control every aspect of everything, including your life. And they want to instill as as much fear as possible and convince people. They want people, I remember there was an article where a guy said, you know, if I had to have a cavity butt search, you know, to keep me safe, then so be it. 
So basically what they're trying to do, and they've been doing this for a long time, and they did it in Boston, and I was going to say this about the you know Boston bombing. After they had their houses searched and these people were, uh, their rights totally violated, they're cheering the police and screaming USA. Think about that. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. And that's what they want. They want to be able to take over and have it via mandate of the people that brainwash people to the point that they're asking for their own enslavement. And there's a lot of people that already are. So don't be one of those people. Question everything. And don't do it with inside that box. You got to get out of, well, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to see the truth, you got to get outside of that box. Now, to me, regardless, government has no authority over people Nothing they do is, you know, their authority is based on the barrel of a gun and a bunch of guys that will back that up. But not only do they violate your rights that way, you know, from extortion of taxes and, you know, kidnapping of people for putting things in their body and all of that, but they do all these other corrupt things at the same time. It's kind of like legalizing drugs. Like I said, it's not only is it a positive thing because of self-ownership, it's also a positive thing because it would help in so many ways. It would it, it would be a positive in so many ways. So it's the same thing with getting rid of government as far as I see it. It's not only does government violate your rights just for telling you that they have authority over you and they can extort you and they can do whatever they want, but they're corrupt. They manipulate everything. They kill people. They do all of this other stuff. So that's all we have for tonight. Tomorrow we'll be back with part one of Sandy Hook. And we'll be talking about, is it, a hoax did it really happen did it happen the way they say it did what uh information is out there to support it and what's the narrative from the government so we'll be doing that the next two nights so be sure to tune in and as always thank you for listening i always uh appreciate it and again we'll be back tomorrow NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. Thanks, everybody. We will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands. Listen to what we tell you and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get-